Hello mountain bikers, welcome to Gear Show. As usual, we've got a loaded program for you today with new handlebars, stems and riding shoes on the menu. We've also got a mini group test of riding pants lined up to help you pick a pair of trousers for the shoulder season. On the topic of picking stuff, did you catch our latest test session? Six recent long travel enduro bikes were put through the grinder by our hard-hitting crew of testers and you can check out what they got up to right here on the channel. Okay then, let's get this show on the road and to start things off with the bang, here's a month in a minute. All the latest gear news rounded up in just one minute. Dig in. Yeti has finally given in to the dark side and produced their first e-bike. It gets a brand new suspension platform and Shimano's proven EP8 motor system. Orbea has updated its Occam all-mountain bike and given it two travel and geometry options, the regular Occam and the Occam LT. Nukeproof has joined the mixed wheel party with MX versions of the Mega and Giga. Comensal has done exactly the same thing with their Meta, which going forward will seemingly only be offered with the mullet setup, except the Meta TR, which is a full 29er. Those who prefer a hardtail will be pleased to see Gorilla Gravity bring back its pedal head, updated with interchangeable dropouts for geared or single-speed builds. Santa Cruz also wants your hardtail money and offers the new Million, which can be built in all kinds of ways. Transition put on a dog and pony show where they taught industry people about maximizing profits and also introduced some new alloy bikes. Spinergy has brought out a new MTX line of wheels featuring their patented PBO spokes made out of flexible high strength xylon fiber. Enduro Bearings has a new line of headsets where the bearing is the component. EXT has some fancy new lightweight springs that will drop 30 to 60 grams compared to most competitors. And finally RockShox has figured out a clever way to make your suspension adapt to the terrain and make your wallet almost weightless at the same time. Ooh, that was intense. Let's slow things down and dig a little deeper. Time for the reviews. First up, we've checked out a few riding pant options for you, as the temperatures are dropping and keeping your legs covered can make for a more comfortable ride. I even cloned myself to make sure I would have time to ride in the mall. Our goal here isn't necessarily to tell you which pant is best, but rather how they are different and what kind of riding they are each suited for. After years of producing gravity shells, Troy Lee has finally joined the lighter weight everyday pant club with the new Skyline. As you might guess from the name, this is essentially a long-legged version of their Skyline short, with which it more or less shares the whole upper part. The pant is made from a lightweight yet sturdy nylon body, with a flexible yoke in the back to help it conform to your movements. It features laser cut ventilation holes, waist adjusters, two zippered pockets and a reinforced patch on the lower leg to help protect against potential damage from the drivetrain. On the trail, this one delivered everything we want in a versatile all-day pant. It's comfortable both for pedaling around in as well as for descending and it stays out of your way as you move around on the bike. It breathes well and does not get overly clingy when damp. The pockets work really well and provide just the right amount of storage space. The pant also provides plenty of room for knee pads and as it shares the cut with most other TLD shorts or pants, it runs true to size with a little extra space around the waist. It's pretty tall in the hem as well, just like the Skyline short. Staying with the more pedal friendly options, Pox Rhythm Resistant Pant ups the ante a bit with a ripstop fabric over the side and knee area and a DWR treatment for improved weather versatility while retaining a lightweight overall construction. Two zippered pockets provide storage room and an elastic waist makes sure each size will fit a range of body dimensions. Two buttons and a zipper close the fly while the lower leg hem gets an elastic section to help them sink down around your ankles. Just like the TLD pant, this one is super comfortable to pedal around in with a cut that works really well on the bike. The waist sits slightly lower than the TLD pant while the inseam is slightly longer. The pockets hold your cargo in a safe and comfortable spot and there is enough room around the knees to fit most knee pads as well. This one is a great option if a little more protection both against the ground and the elements is of interest to you without resorting to a full-on gravity pant. The price is high but the materials are top-notch and so is the attention to detail. Liat's 4.0 pant serves up a modern take on the old nylon DH shells of years gone by. Imagine that bomb-proof feeling in a pant that is much lighter and more comfortable to the touch. That's the 4.0. It still looks a bit like those old Moto crossover pants, but with colors and graphics that match the rest of Liat's bike line. We love the extra reinforcements on the shins and knees, which should help the pant deal with the worst you can throw at it. There's a soft and moisture repellent seat area, and the cut is pre-curved at the knees to be comfortable while pedaling. You can of course wear it with or without knee protection underneath, and there's plenty of ventilation holes to ensure you can keep it on all day as well. The two main pockets work well enough, although they are on the small side. And there's a third pocket behind the waist which can hold smaller items like a lift pass or an energy bar. The overall cut and sizing are spot on. This one is a good choice if you want one pant for both park and pedal duty. Darko's Gravity Pant is here for tough days in the saddle, as you might have guessed from the name. 
It's constructed with pretty heavy-duty fabrics, and you can tell it was made for people who take more than their fair share of dirt naps. The fit is tight, so you definitely need to consider your average burger intake before ordering. The inseam and other dimensions are true to size, but there is not a lot of extra room in the thigh and crotch area. The pant offers three pockets for storage, including a rear pocket which provides the most protection for your phone, although not all of our testers liked this option. One of the side pockets sits in an awkward place, meaning you'll only be able to store small items here, as a phone, for example, will get in the way of your movements as you pedal. The waist is adjustable and there is plenty of room for knee pads. The lower leg tapers in to make sure the pant cannot catch on a chainring or similar, and we particularly appreciate the graphic applied to one of the pocket zippers. A nice touch. Subjectively speaking, this one feels like it will take the most abuse out of the four options presented here today. Conversely, it's also the least breathable. A great choice for all you park rats and racers, although we definitely like to see a better design when it comes to the pockets, as everybody needs somewhere to store some stuff when pounding out those laps. P&W Components recently introduced the third generation of their range handlebar and stem, bringing them up to speed with modern geometry requirements and joining the 35mm diameter club at the same time, although this cockpit exists in a 31.8mm version as well, if that's where your preferences lie. The range handlebar features a relaxed 10 degree back sweep, 5 degree up sweep combo, which PNW says is a more comfortable option. Although the bar has now gained 20 millimeters of width, it is actually lighter than its predecessor by about 25 grams. Making it from a 2014 alloy blend and figuring out just the right butting profile helped PNW reach their comfort goals as well. The new range stem is CNC'd from 6061 alloy and comes in either 40 or 50 millimeters of length. The layout is classic with two bolts on the stirrer clamp and a four bolt faceplate. The stem only comes in black, while the black handlebar comes with a choice of five colors for the graphics. The finish is of high quality and pleasing both to the eye and to the touch. Installing the new cockpit was a breeze, and although we typically prefer 5mm hardware in our cockpit, the bolts here feel good under the wrenches and have not let us down on the trail at all. The handlebar Geo is very comfortable in action, and we can't say much else other than that we felt pretty much at home from the get-go. The bar is not harsh, and the angles seem to connect you to your cockpit just right. A great value upgrade to consider if you're a fan of a clean look, especially in light of the very competitive pricing. Giro recently introduced the all-new Latch flat pedal shoe, and they've made several key improvements compared to its predecessor, the Riddens. To start with, the Latch is a lot lighter, and they've also introduced some innovative new features driven by the requirements of their sponsored athletes, Reed Boggs, Graham Agassiz, and Josh Lewis, who wanted to find a way to help avoid the feet bouncing off the pedals in rough sections or during big landings. To address this point, Giro introduced a Mute Foam Midsole, a slow rebound compound that replaces the traditional EVA foam in this area. They also lowered the profile of the whole sole to place the foot closer to the pedal. On the grip side, Giro formulated a new outsole made from tack rubber, which is said to offer a good mix of grip and durability. On the trail, we found the new shoe very comfortable on the foot. The materials are soft and smooth on the inside, and the shoe grips the foot securely without any pressure points. The insole offers good arch support, and the toe box provides enough room for your toes to splay out in. In terms of grip, there are two sides to the story here. When your foot is exerting a certain pressure on the pedal, the connection is great and the effects of the mute foam midsole can be felt. There's a lot of damping under the foot, which adds to the comfort and the feeling of being latched onto the pedal. The surface grip of the outsole does fall short of the market leaders, however, which means that if your foot starts to float off the pedal a bit, it doesn't have that tenacious clinginess that a 510 or a specialized sole offer. In summary, if you're looking for an all-mountain shoe that provides a high degree of comfort, both on the way up and the way down, and you don't need the absolute highest level of grip available, Giro's new latch is a solid choice. One more piece of shoe news before we wrap up. 510 has recently released a prime blue version of their do-it-all Freerider. Prime blue is a material derived from recycled plastic recovered from the world's oceans. In this Freerider, 50% of the upper is textile, 75% of the textile is prime blue yarn. No virgin polyester was used to make this shoe. The fit stays the same, although we noted that the shoe feels a little stiffer on the foot initially. As for the grip, it's what you'd expect from any shoe adorned with 510's legendary stealth rubber. Pretty much as good as it gets. Alright then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails.